Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, all praises are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. And may peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad and his family and his companions forever. I begin with the greeting words of the righteous. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. One of the great blessings and mercies in being Muslim today is that the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that were revealed over 1400 years ago are still a source of inspiration. And Allah has revealed to us in Surah at Toba, verse 119. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqu laha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah and be with the truthful. And this truthfulness is not only in word, but it is also in deed. The truthfulness should be something which surrounds the whole life of the believer. And this truthfulness is so important in the last days that our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, has revealed in an authentic hadith that there would come in the last days kathabun dajjalun, great liars, to the point of being false prophets. They will come to you with a type of speech that you nor your parents have ever heard of before. And so beware of them. Be, we, beware that they take you astray. And beware that they put you into a trial and a temptation. Sadaqa Rasulullah, he has spoken the truth. For surely we have come to these times today. With digital technology, humanity has developed the ability to make what is true seem false and to make what is false appear to be true. And so we are able to manipulate sound, to manipulate colors, to change the scenery before the eyes of the viewers. And this technology can uh, enable us to either educate people throughout the planet simultaneously, or we could confuse people all around the planet. And so it is of critical importance for Muslims to depend upon truthful sources. And that is first the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, that we should first depend upon this as our chief source. If there is an incident in the world, if there is something in my life or your life, we should first look to the book of Allah for guidance and then to the words of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. After this, our great sources of Islam, our great scholars and the guidance that has come to us, we should look at these in categories and try to understand what is going on. And then with this base, we can try to understand the world today. This is of critical importance for the Muslims because the times are changing so rapidly and there are so many events happening in the world and young people especially are becoming confused. But if that Quranic basis is there, if the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are there to give us the light that we need in the times of darkness, then we have a solid basis with which to deal with the world around us. Muslims find themselves going through great changes. Our nation is expanding all over the world. We are now learning to use this technology. And Allah has blessed the Muslim world with the technology to produce Islamic programming. And also on the internet, we are able to have Islamic websites. We have Islamic radio stations, television stations. There are so many books being written by Muslims. And so we are blessed to have our original sources and also the sources of the truthful ones to be with us so that we can try to understand what is going on in the world. The Prophet, peace be upon him, in another hadith which is so interesting, and this is reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah. He said that the last hour would not appear until fitan, until trials and tribu tribulations would appear in the land, and lying would become widespread. And then he said in Arabic, this is very interesting because he said not only uh, will lying be widespread and, and temptations and trials be widespread, but he also said the marketplaces will come close. And when the great scholars looked at this in times close to the Prophet ﷺ, they may have thought that yes, the marketplace will come from way outside and will be close to my home. But look at us today. Allah has blessed us with a new understanding 
We can even in our own bedroom, open up the laptop and go on to the international marketplace. And so not only is the marketplace right outside of our home, but it has entered into our very bedrooms. Sadaqa Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, surely our beloved prophet has spoken the truth. He also told us, peace be upon him, he spoke about the al qalam that the pens would appear, that writing would be widespread throughout the planet. And this is so important for us to focus upon these words. The Prophet, peace be upon him, did not speak from himself, but his words were a form of revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave him the, the insight and Allah gave him the, the, the overview of what would happen right until the day of resurrection. And so we find ourselves now in the time of digital technology. We find ourselves with the ability to manipulate with so much information that has come to us. And we find that scholars, Islamic scholars, and even families can possess large volumes of Islamic material. In the past, it may have taken Muslims months and years before they, coll they could collect one hadith. But today, through the use of the computer, we can have thousands of hadiths in our home. We are able to access the information of scholars who lived all over the planet. But what was the difference? What was the difference between the scholars of the past, the Muslims of the past, and the Muslims of today? One of the great differences is that they were truthful. They were with the Sadiqeen. Not only did they take in this information intellectually, but they confirmed it in their hearts and their limbs acted out what they were told. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them and the knowledge became beneficial, not just book knowledge, but the knowledge became a lifestyle and that lifestyle traveled all throughout the planet. That lifestyle influenced people in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, in the Americas, in the Middle East, in every part of the world at some point in time, Muslims traveled throughout the land. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them to be able to not only take in the information, but to give it over to other people. These are the Sadiqeen. And Allah has encouraged us, has informed us that we should have consciousness of his existence. We should fear Allah and hope in the mercy of Allah. And this taqwa would become a wiqaya. It is a shield surrounding us to protect us from the forces of evil, to protect us from the temptations on a spiritual level and on a physical level. This wiqaya would protect us from the many plots and trials that we see in the world today. And as in the case of the Sahaba, the essence would not be based upon numbers, but the essence of victory would be based upon the quality, the sidq, the truthfulness that makes the Muslim not only just a person who practices rituals, but a source of inspiration and revelation. And so I leave you with these thoughts, and I pray that Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would bless me and bless you with this truthfulness. That Allah would bless us to be able to take in the words, the divine inspiration from above seven heavens, to take in the words from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, to put this into our lives and to make this relevant in the world today. It is a great challenge to be Muslim today. It is a great source of blessing. And I pray that you would be successful and that I would be successful and that we could change the world. I say what I have said and I ask Allah to have mercy on me and you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.